In our previous lesson, in this series on sorting algorithms, we had discussed selection sort algorithm. Now in this lesson, we are going to discuss another sorting algorithm named bubble sort. So once again, let's say we have a list of integers given to us in the form of an array, something like this. Let's name this array A. We have six elements in the array. So we have indices from zero to five. Now we want to sort this array. So we want to rearrange the elements in the array in increasing order. What we are going to do in this algorithm is we are going to scan the array from left to right multiple times. We will call each scan one pass on the array. It's like we will first look at the zeroth element and then look at the oneth element and then the element at index two and so on. Of course, we will not scan the array for no reason. What we will do is when we are scanning the array and when we are at a particular position, we will compare the element at that particular position with the adjacent element at the next position. So if we are at zeroth position, we will compare the element at zeroth position with the element at oneth position. And if the element at the current position is greater than the element at the next position, we will swap the two elements. In this case, uh, two is not greater than seven. So we will not swap the two elements. We will just move on to the next position which will be position one. Once again, we will compare the element at this position with its next element. And if it is greater, we will swap the two elements. In this case, seven is greater than four. So we will swap the position of these two elements. So seven will move to index two and four will move to index one. And now we will move to index two. The number at index two at this stage will be seven. Once again, we will look at the next element it's one, seven is again greater than one. So we will swap and now we will move to index three. Once again, at this stage, the number at index three is seven. We will compare it with five and we need to swap again. So seven will go to index four and five will move to index three. And now we will go to index four. As you can see, this whole process is pushing number seven, which is the largest in the array towards higher indices at each step. When we are at position four, once again, seven is greater than three. So we will swap. There is no next element for index five. And at this stage, we are done with one pass on the array. And what has happened after this one pass is that seven, which is the largest in the array, is at its appropriate position. It deserves to be at position at index five in the sorted array. And that's where it is. So seven has kind of bubbled up to the rightmost position in the array with this whole logic of swapping the adjacent elements. This was our initial array. And after first pass, we have gone to a state like this. If I quickly have to write pseudo code for a pass, it will be running a loop, something like this. We will run a loop from zero to n minus one. Let's say n is the number of elements in an array. And if e i, the element at position i, is greater than element at position i plus one, we will swap the two elements. There is one minor bug here. If i is equal to n minus one, it will be the last index. So there will be no element after that. So we will not be able to access a i plus one. Uh, so we will run this loop only till n minus two. We don't want to access an index that will be out of the bound of the array, out of the range of the array. For i equal n minus one, a i plus one would have been out of range. Okay, so this is the state of the array after one pass. What if we perform another pass? And once again, keep comparing the adjacent elements and performing swaps. If we will do so, now the second largest element in this example will end up at index four. The second largest in the array is number five. So after second pass, our array will be in a state like this. With every pass on the array, the array will be divided into two parts. One part will be the sorted part and another part will be unsorted part. After two passes, the part of the array from index four till five is sorted and the part of the array from index zero till three is unsorted. With each pass, the largest element in the unsorted half will bubble up to the highest index in the unsorted half. So in third pass, number four should bubble up to position three, index three. And while scanning, once we reach to the part where we are already sorted, there will be no swapping. 
We can actually avoid going to the sorted part. It will only improve our algorithm. To pass 3, our array will be looking like this. In fact, we are already sorted. In general, if we will conduct n minus 1 such passes for an array of size n, we can say something like for k 1 to n minus 1 or we could say for k 0 to n minus 2. After n minus 1 passes, we are guaranteed to be sorted. So this is our pseudo code for bubble sort algorithm. Given an array and the number of elements in the array, this function bubble sort will sort the elements in the array in increasing order. Let's now try to analyze the time complexity of this algorithm. The running time of this algorithm will be the running time of these statements inside the nested loop. Let's assume that these statements will take constant time c in the worst case. These statements will execute in constant time. Now the first loop will run exactly n minus 1 times and the second loop will also run exactly n minus 1 times. So the total time taken as a function of n will be n minus 1 into n minus 1 into c which will evaluate to cn square minus 2cn plus 1. Whenever we have a polynomial expression for time then we say that the time complexity is big O of the highest order term in the polynomial. The highest order term here is n square. We just remove the constants and we say that this is this running time will fall into the class big O of highest order term. In this case it will be n square. If you do not know about big O notation or how to calculate running time of algorithms, we have a whole series on time complexity analysis. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. Big O of n square is not the best running time for a sorting algorithm. In fact, this running time is bad. Bubble sort is a slow sorting algorithm. It's as good as selection sort, but both bubble sort and selection sort are slow sorting algorithms. We can do a couple of things in this algorithm to improve the time complexity, at least for some scenarios. The first thing that we can do is, we need not run this second loop all the way till n minus 2 all the time. As we had discussed earlier, at any stage during the sorting, the array will have some part as sorted and some part as unsorted. There is no point passing through the sorted part because there will be no swapping in that part. For first pass, we can run this inner loop till n minus 2. For the second pass, we can run this inner loop only till n minus 3 and we will be good. For the third pass, we can only run till n minus 4 and so on. So in general, we can run this loop till n minus k minus 1. So when k is 1, we will run till n minus 2. When k is 2, we will run till n minus 3 and so on. This is some improvement. But in this case also, if you would calculate the time expression, it will be some polynomial of the form a n square plus b n plus c. So complexity will still be big O of n square. We can do something else to improve this algorithm further. If you remember the example that we had picked up, it was sorted after three passes only. And fourth and fifth pass was only redundant. If the list is already sorted, there would be no swaps. So if we go through a pass without swapping anything, then definitely at that stage the list is already sorted. So I'll do something like this in this algorithm. I'll take a variable and name it flag and set it to zero before making a pass. And once this condition ai greater than ai plus one is true for any i, then we will have to swap and we will set this flag as 1. And now when we will come out of this loop after a pass, if flag is 0, then there has been not even one swap. So we do not need to conduct any more passes so we can break out of this loop, the outer loop. And this way we will avoid making redundant passes once the array is sorted. Now with this modification, if we input an already sorted array to the function bubble sort, then this particular loop will execute only once to figure out that it's already sorted. So the time taken if we were considering this as taking some constant time c in the worst case, the time taken will be c into n minus 1 only. So this will be the best case for our algorithm. Our algorithm will be big O of n in the best case. In the average case, Somewhere midway after making let's say n by 2 passes, we will exit the inner loop. If we will deduce the time complexity expression, it will still come like come something like uh, 
a n square plus b n plus c kind of expression. So in average case also this will be big O of n square and in worst case the inner loop will also run n minus 1 times and we will be big O of n square. Bubble sort is in place and stable sorting algorithm and we just deduced its time complexity which is big O of n square in the worst case. This is it for this lesson. Thanks for watching.